been so excited for this. I'm off on a 1,000 mile round trip from Ipswich in the far east coast of England, all the way down to the far southwest of England to see my parents in Cornwall. My aim for today, ride down to the south coast of England, all the way along the south coast to Brighton, where hopefully I'll have a coffee and then find somewhere along the way, a campsite. And you may wonder, after my last trip in Spain, why are you even considering camping again? Just get an Airbnb, get a hotel, it's easier. But the problem is, Airbnbs, accommodation of any sort in England, it's hugely expensive and it can be restrictive on the kinds of biking adventures you want to do. What camping does is it brings back that freedom because it allows me to have more money for fuel and less worry about money. So I'm not restricted by thinking, oh, I can only do one, one multi-day biking trip a year because it's expensive. No, with camping, I can do as many multi-day biking trips as I want. And that brings back the magic of biking. Before I do a walk around of the bike, my setup for this trip, just gotta show you where I am now. We're on the Orwell River in Suffolk. And it must be, I'm sure you'll let me know because I haven't been in England much recently, must be one of the best summers on record. It is absolutely stunning here. Perfect place to start a road trip. I've checked the forecast in Cornwall. Not quite as good as here. I've tried to pack lighter this time than I did on the last trip. So I've been strict. All I've got, two Hepco and Penny, two Hepco and Becker panniers, one on either side. They've got a lock so I can leave the bike with no real issue. I've got one disc lock that I can attach just to make sure the bike is safe. Wingman of the road tent, that is a tent and a sleeping bag all in one. And that's it, no extra stuff here. Gear wise, exclusive helmets, Raid shiny black. Tobacco motorwear jeans, California company, very, very nice quality denim with, this is the most special jacket I've got. It's a bell staff. I think it's called the Trailmaster, but I'll include the name in the written description. It's expensive, but the most beautiful quality biking jacket I've ever tried. Wax cotton, I think it's about 550 pounds. However, if you're interested in one of these, wait till the winter and go onto eBay because secondhand ones of these come up and I think you should be able to get one for under 200 pounds or so. And that makes a very good buy because it's genuinely a jacket for life. Very nice. filled up with fuel about three miles ago or so. I've done 152 miles in total, but I must be honest, I was riding along for half an hour out of Ipswich and suddenly had an epiphany. I'd forgotten every single pair of shoes and I'm going to Cornwall, probably to the beach, and I don't have one pair of shoes apart from biking boots. So I had to turn around half an hour back and then half an hour to get back on track. It set me back an hour and a quarter. So I don't think there's any time to stop off in Brighton for a coffee, but that's not too big a problem because the campsite I want to get to is three and a half hours away and 165 miles from here on the south coast towards Brighton. It's 2.30 now and I would love it if I can get to the campsite by about six o'clock so I can just have a lovely, chilled out, relaxing evening. I don't think I've ever hit target yet so far, but fingers crossed. Here's my situation. It is 10 to three. I'm right here just to the north of Brighton and I need to get three hours, 28 minutes 
all the way across just to the west of Bournemouth and that will get me, if I just zoom out a little bit more, almost halfway from where I am at the moment to right in the far west hand corner of England down to Falmouth. So if I can get here by the evening that will mean I've got a very nice relaxing ride tomorrow for when I'm meant to be in Cornwall. So Sweet Hill Farm. Well it says wild camping. Hmm. This will be interesting how wild wild actually means for a campsite that's paid. Let's go. This is an unplanned coffee stop. I was pretty much falling asleep. And once I get to a point where I start falling asleep on the motorway, my head starts going like that as I'm riding along and I look like I've got problems and people around me start getting fairly nervous in cars. So time to pull over because I was looking ridiculous and it was embarrassing. Finish off this coffee, one and a half, one and a half hours left. Stunning E-type. All of the classics are out today, all of them. Very, very nice. I've got one and a half hours left. Um, I can't remember the mileage. It is 66 miles. So that E-type just got all of my attention. 66 miles, one and a half hours, and it's five o'clock now, so I'll probably be there at about 6.30 or so. So, fairly decent time, I'm quite happy with that. And this was essential anyway. I could not do, couldn't do another five minutes or so. Monica's always amazed when I say I'm falling asleep on a bike. She says, how is that possible? It's very weird. life so much easier staying in a campsite as opposed to for example wild camping so I paid my 10 pound entrance fee and this is a really interesting area it's the Isle of Portland just down from Dorset on a peninsula just jutting out into the sea I'll leave all of the details for this campsite in the written description below so it's 10 pounds to stay here it's one pound for showers and they have loos on site as well and you can pretty much just ride in or drive in tent camper van and pick your spot and the amount of hassle it saves having to try and look for places on the side of the road to camp it's i think for 10 pounds a bit of a no-brainer so hopefully it will mean that I wake up in the morning completely refreshed, ready for the final three and a half hours or so. So I'll flip the camera around now and I'll show you what you get for 10 pounds a night. So this is my setup here, wingman of the road, of course, very, very quick setup. And just that mat that I put underneath and in between the bike and the tent, just so you can get changed and things like that. This is the pitch that I've chosen no individual pictures, you can literally just put it anywhere. So I've put it right in between these two, but you can see how, how foggy it is. You can't really see anything more than about 200 meters ahead of you. Over here, right in front of me, you've got the loos, and I have to see if I can find the showers. So you've got loos ahead, and just seen here, that's a, a kind of wash basin area just to the left of it. 
I've also got a few people in individual tents. I've seen a few cyclists as well. I think straight ahead of me is the sea. So I may try, maybe tomorrow morning if it clears up, may try and head over there, but you can see down the side there, it's a working farm all around. So you've got haystacks as well. But look at that. It's so, so moody this evening. And these are the showers. I was wondering if I'd find them. So you've got a couple of outdoor showers there and the shower cubicles here. And that's where you put your money in. Very good. They look brand new and that's all extremely easy to, to navigate and understand. I wonder if staying in an actual campsite could genuinely make me a convert to camping. I'll keep you posted on that and I will end the video here and I'll start the next one from tomorrow morning for the final ride over to Cornwall. Thanks so much everyone for coming along. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I will see you all in the next one.